Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Dookie Forge. This is going to be an exciting episode, at least I think it is, because we just recently hit the 50 bottle opener threshold. And as I could continue just making the 50 bottle openers the way I have by hand and just making them like, uh, where is it? Where's one? There we go. Just like this. Like that. Um, I could continue making them like this, no problem. But I want to uh, expand a little bit and learn as much as I can out of a simple project like this. So my plan right now <clears throat> is to take a little bit of break, a small break, and with the plan of expanding into the bottle openers uh, in a little bit more of an advanced way, I suppose. I, I think it's a little bit more advanced. And so this is what we got going on right here. And this is not a bottle opener, obviously. This is a 5 sixteenths thick steel plate. Um, it is mild steel, but it's like a structural steel. So it has a bunch of other stuff in it to make it really tough. Uh, I forget what exactly it is, but um, it starts with an A and it's like an A something 15 or something like that. But this steel is what we are going to be working on uh, in this project. And it is for the purpose of making a bending jig for this guy. So what I've done is I looked through all 50 of my bottle openers. And I found the one I liked the most and I'm going to make a bending jig based on these proportions. And so the idea is to obviously cut off a chunk, cut off a chunk here and get, uh, you know, pins, I suppose, put in here with, in, you know, with this shape, these shapes, and that I can just bend the whole thing around. So I started with a CG uh, approach, obviously, where my, uh, my skill set lies. And uh, I just took the relative dimensions of the base plate and I just started messing with ideas. Uh, first ideas were, you know, a couple larger pins mixed with small pins to kind of create that, you know, fill in those spaces where the, the bends happen. And I wasn't quite happy with that. so I. I designed, you know, one with a bunch of smaller pins, and again, it just didn't quite feel right. My third uh, idea was to take the quarter-inch rod that I make the bottle openers out of and make kind of horseshoe bends in that those those areas as well that kind of follow, well, the bends that uh, they need. And this wasn't a bad idea. I think this was doable. Um, but it just seemed a little over, little overkill or a little, uh, no, a little too much. Again, so I even simplified it again. I ran some basic ca volume calculations to see if the rods that I was using uh, could be squished down enough to fill in those spaces, and I ended up with just a much simpler uh, pancake you know, taking the half inch rods that I have, pancaking them down and making the dies. And that is what we ended up with. So hopefully I can do something like that. And so what I'm going to do is use these half inch round chunks. These are inch and a half cut roughly. And what my plan is, is to go like this. Well, essentially map it out here get the, all the stuff figured out, put one in there, you know, and go, yeah, 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 yeah. That's the technical way to do it. And essentially pancake these out into the shapes and probably uh, grind them to fit specifically these shapes. And then, uh, 
attach them, I'm, I'm, right now I'm thinking about riveting them. Once they're flattened out, I think I'm going to drill a hole, a quarter inch hole in them and use some of the quarter inch rod that I've been making the bottle openers out of and making rivets and riveting the dies, I suppose, uh, to the steel plate. Now there's still a few things I have to figure out, um, like, uh, well, just figure out, you know, if what I'm thinking will work, but that'll be, uh, come to forge time. But, you know, how am I going to attach this plate to the anvil and keep it still? And, you know, while I'm bending the things around, I don't want this thing, you know, to do that and move around. So I'm thinking I'm going to have a little bit of overhang, a little bit of excess and have area for some pins to go through like the pritchard hole and the, the whatever holes in the anvil and try to lock it in that way. At least that's my hope. And um, yeah, so that's pretty cool. So the, the long story, the short story of why I want to make a bending jig for something as simple as these bottle openers is one, I want to make it as efficient as I can to make this shape um, and learn as much as I can. But the, the main, main reason, I suppose, is I want to make it more efficient to make this shape so that way I can do a little bit more artistic freedom and not uh, waste as much time. So the time I'm going to save by making this in a bending jig I will end up using by making things like this, a twisted one that's like squared, you know, hammered square the whole way and then twisted in weird ways or like this one that uses more material but it's like a heart handle thing and well that one probably not but um, but essentially I can make this shape a lot faster and do twisted and add like leaf elements and you know other stuff. Um, to it and uh, not waste as much time. So that is the project we are going to be working on next. Now, I don't, still don't know exactly how I'm going to do it. I'm, I'm recording this intro uh, actually a couple weeks probably before, a week or two before I even start the project, but I was just too excited. I had to do this and talk about it and stuff. So. As I figure out more and uh, all that stuff, I will reveal it. I'm here. I don't know exactly what I'm doing. I'm definitely delving into uncharted territory when it comes to this. Um, obviously, I've gotten fairly decent at making the bottle openers, but anything else, I really don't quite know. And so I'm uh, kind of, you know, a little nervous just kind of making something up. This is, you know, not from a, a lesson book or it's just from my imagination at this point. So it's even scarier. And, uh, but I suppose we should give one of these guys a smash. you already where I can't hold on to it because it's getting squished essentially to the tongs so I might 
have to rethink this and come back at it another day. But it squished them really well. Well, right when I started a new project, I ran into, I don't know, I don't know if it's a big issue, but an issue. So without being able to necessarily make progress on that little piece there, I'm gonna shut off the, uh, the forge for the day. Let's turn, where is it, close? right turn that off turn the regulator off and go up here close the valve and let that sucker cool down so what we're left with here oh that's hot what we're left with is these little snubby nubs and one of them, I mean, they're almost big enough for, they might be actually already big enough for uh, one of the holes. And actually, that'll work out great. So then I can take these and grind them. This one's the most cattywampus, so I'll probably save that to squish it into the bigger piece. Um, but uh, yeah, in order to continue this project, I'm going to have to figure out how to hold on to those things. All right, it's a new day. We're back at the park with the goal of uh, continuing our work on the bending jig that I kind of you know, jumped into last week and messed up a little bit. Um, now this week, well, this today isn't gonna be necessarily much different. I'm kind of just jumping in again with a new, newish plan, um, but uh, hopefully it works. Now, there won't be as much blacksmithing uh, necessarily, but these are the two half-decent plugs that I made last time, and that is the uh, to, to fit inside of here. Now, they're already a little too big to fit in this one, um, but I'm going to squish them down just a little bit more just to try to even them out and make sure I have enough meat here to grind them to shape so that they can fit inside there. Now, as far as solving this problem, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this half inch rod and I'm going to cut a two inch section off, heat that up and squash down the two inch section so hopefully I have enough meat to kind of swell out and still hold on to it. Now the downside is I don't have anything, any tongs that can actually hold on to it. So I'm probably going to have to use a pair of pliers which will mar up the sides but hopefully I can make it big enough that um, I can grind it to shape. So I'm gonna finish setting up.
Uh, so, I, as you can probably see, I'm still running into a little bit of issues with the big plug. Um, it's kind of doing an hourglass shape. I think I need to go on the sides and kind of re-cylinderize it and then keep squishing it down. And uh, the, the challenge is I still, I don't really have anything proper to hold it still as far as, you know, that size stock. So it's just going to be kind of a pain. Um, but I think that's what I'm going to do and hopefully that solves the, uh, the hourglass, hourglassing shape. So uh, I'm continuing, the big plug is actually coming to shape, but I'm running into the, still the same issue that I was running into before. And uh, that is that the profile of anything that I have that I can hold it with is pretty tall and I can't you know, hammer it any lower. So what I'm gonna try to do is actually take the rounding hammer, the round end, maybe the small one um, and hold on to just the edge of the disc and hit around the outside edge and try to kind of expand it out like a more like a UFO And not even a chance. <clears throat> but, you know what I did accidentally find out? It's a good way to hold it and smash it down. <laughs> Look at that. I don't have to forge weld it. If I can smash in, in a piece of steel that then holds it. Now I'm ruining a, a little bit of quarter inch, but at least I'll well that'll work. Uh, unorthodox solution, but. Well, as it turns out, that silly little technique that I just ran across uh, worked out great. The puck is plenty big, um, and now I have to grind it to shape, essentially. So I have the two first big bending points. I have the third big one. I'm still missing the small, uh, I guess, uh, tooth grabber the, in the front of the bottle opener where you put the... Uh, put the wedge, I suppose, wedge side, um, and the base plate. And of course, ways to connect the pucks and the, the, to the base plate and all that stuff. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the forge and uh, dog is running around. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the forge and um, let this thing cool down and then talk about next steps and hopefully things go okay. <laughs> Well, I'm kind of excited about this and a little scared as well. This is another, uh, I think this is a huge addition to my limited tool set that I've, uh, well, had to been dealing with and kind of growing uh, as, we, as we go. And this is a pretty big addition. I haven't used it yet. My hope is that it works.
for what I'm trying to do. Obviously, I know it'll work, but for what I'm trying to do, I hope it works. Here it is. Boom, bam, boom, boom, bam, bam, boom, bam, boom, boom, bam, boom, boom, bam. Yep, it's a clamp. Brand new clamps, brand new life. No, obviously, it is a small porta ban with a table. I have it just clamped to the, to the cart. And the idea is obviously to cut stuff, but the reason, the primary reason I got this is to not only cut stuff, but hopefully for future projects, be able to cut straight lines. That's been one of my issues with all of my stuff I have so far is I just have, I don't even have the ability to cut like a good straight line with the angle grinder or the hacksaw, any long cuts, it just gets off. And then I, you know, I don't have a grinder or milling machine or anything like that to try to like fix the problem or whatever. So I'm hoping that not only will this help me just cut stuff, um, but this will allow me to cut, well, straighter lines. Now in this case, it won't really matter too much because our first test of the machine is to cut this uh, 3 8 inch thick base plate for the bending jig. So I don't necessarily need a straight line, I just need the, the, you know, the proper length um, cut out. So um, that is the exciting new tool that I have, and I am so excited. Now, now watch, I go to use this, I go to record, and it just, it just uh, breaks, the thing blows up, catches fire. I, I have a feeling that might happen, so <laughs> stay tuned. But not this time, all right. All right, I have to say that worked way, way better than even I was hoping for. Uh, I do have the drill and the wire wheel. I could clean it up a little bit. So I think that's what I'll do. I probably won't record it. That's super boring. Um, I'm gonna clean this up. I'll be back. Holy crap, look at this beautiful piece of steel. It cleaned up really nice. Has a few dents and dings, of course, but I am not worried about that. Look at that. That is really nice. So, next thing we gotta do is, well, I gotta think about what I gotta do. So I decided I'm gonna at least try to get some holes drilled through um, these, these uh, pucks. Now, the goal is to put a quarter inch hole through the center of each of these. I'm gonna start with a slightly smaller drill. Now, unfortunately, I don't have a punch to, a center punch to make it a little bit easier, uh, but I'll do the easiest one, I suppose, first, which will be this guy, because I have um, plenty of room to grind him to shape, and I do mean grind. Um, and uh, so I can have a little bit of wiggle room, so I'll at least drill this one first, and see how it goes. Oh. 
Then let's get this quarter inch, which is probably my dullest drill bit because I used it to build or drill every hole in the construction of the cart. But it seemed to work just fine. Yeah, not perfectly centered on you know, one side or the other, so the hope is that it's not so far off that I can't grind it to shape and then mount it uh, to the plate. Now, now with that done, I think, <clears throat> oh, hot. I think I am actually done out here in the park. Well, we're back at the apartment. I cooled off a little bit, had a think, and I think I have somewhat of a plan. I don't, I don't know if I would call it a plan, but it's, I have some thoughts. So one of the issues I was going to run into is grinding this to shape. So let's say this is, I haven't decided which one goes where yet, but let's say this one goes here. Well, holding it and making sure I grind the right areas as I try to fit and do this thing and make sure it fits good, uh, because it's not a perfectly spherical or s circular shape, I wanna make sure I keep the directions like as I shape this correct. So what I had in mind was putting a bolt through it, of course, tightening her down. And essentially tightening it down pretty good. And being able to hold on to this, and I'm gonna have a mark for like what would be the, the, the front. And I was thinking like this side, this direction, the op or the away from the curve would be the front facing. So like in this case, this peg would be front facing that way. This peg, its front would be facing that way because this is the primary bend source. So that way I can keep things straight. And then this would be number one, this would be number two, and this would be number three. So I was thinking that I could snug these down, mark up what would be front, which number it is, and then work on it and be able to just kind of quickly snug it up and you know, pass it through each uh, area until it fits perfectly all, all the way through. Well, okay, so I have everything marked up, I think, well enough that I won't get lost as I'm kind of working my way through these things. Grinding disc on the angle grinder. All right, oh, let me get the camera out. So the back parking lot of my penthouse studio apartment was packed full of people and cars and all sorts of stuff. So I walked down the alleyway a little ways and uh, just found this parking lot. And I just walked in and I'm just going to uh, sit down, drop my, drop my tool bag, sit down and try to make these things. It just feels weird being in a random parking lot, I suppose. But uh, whatever works, you know, you gotta do what you gotta do. So we got angle grinder. I'm gonna have to position these things uh, all correctly, but let's just get everything out that I think I'm gonna need and get everything. All right, so we have our plugs. All right, we have a wrench. Well, we have two wrenches, I suppose. Don't need the big one. Um, what else? I think it's just gonna go back and forth between the grinder, 
marking it, sizing, and I'm just going to do kind of one at a time. So hopefully we can uh, not get kicked out of this parking lot and uh, <laughs> we can try to do this thing. Uh, we'll see. So it's going to be spinning that way. Well, I'm gonna be doing this for a while, so I'm just gonna cut the camera and uh, I'll probably be back with maybe when I'm done with this one or when I'm moving on to the uh, bigger plug. Well, literally two minutes after I uh, started on the big one, the second battery is dead. And uh, well, that's it for these today. I'm going to head back to the apartment and I'm going to start uh, trying to plan some stuff. Um, I got a little, ooh, that's hot. I got a little ways on the big one, but I have a little bit more to go. That one is a little bit easier because uh, it's just, well, it's a bigger object, you know, bigger diameter, so I can just move it around a little bit easier. But as far as the small uh, bending pieces, it's looking really good. So when i go to uh, put this thing finally together probably next weekend uh if i yeah probably next weekend um if i when i go to put this thing together i'm probably going to take some hand files clean these things up a little bit take the one that's just a little bit small and after i kind of i might ha do some kind of cold hammering maybe i'll warm it up a little bit and just squish it just a little bit to kind of swell it out and then hand file it back down to shape. Uh, this one, the front one, I don't think it needs any real shaping. Uh, I'm just gonna take a hand file and I clean up any like weird spots and uh, plan on putting uh, that bevel in. So uh, I think this video will probably continue next week. Tomorrow I have plans to work on some other things and uh, hopefully that works out too. So I will see you in a little bit. Whew. Well, I just got out back at the park again. And today's mission is to uh, finish, hopefully, uh, at least make some good progress to get close to finishing or finishing the bending jig. Now, I have two of the dies fitted and the third one still needs some shape shaping. Um, but what I'm going to try to do today has to kind of go in a very specific order. So the uh, steel plate, um, I'm going to need to, you know, position the two dies that are finished on the steel plate, drill the holes so that they all line up. I'm going to take a file and I'm going to file in uh, teeth into the holes so that when I rivet, the the dies onto the plate they have uh teeth that they can sink into a little bit and uh, it'll make sense when i show you but teeth to sink in a little bit so to keep things from spinning on the underside of the plate i'm gonna have to do a little bit of a countersink because i'm gonna grind that flat and i still need steel of the rivet to hold it so i need it to sink in a little bit into the bottom of the plate to be able to hold those so i need to mark it need to drill it need to cut some teeth need the countersink then I need to fire up the forge. Uh, oh, I also need to make the bottom die holder so that, um, I guess I don't have to. I, I was thinking I might have to, but maybe I don't. But uh, uh, it's gonna, yeah, I, you know, I'll figure it out. But uh, 
I'm gonna rivet them on. So there won't be a lot of necessarily forging, but uh, hopefully everything, um, well, goes to plan. Um, yeah, so let's do it. So I have these two holes. The next thing I wanna do is actually, while it's there and clamped in, I wanna take, well, I suppose the first first thing I ought to do is make sure they fit. If you look at that, I have it fit and it fits really well actually. So once I have the third one, obviously the third one won't actually fit in here because I'm gonna, uh, I was thinking about it and I can actually make this one perfectly round as far as the die. Um, but it won't fit in here because of the pigtail here. So that's, that's fine. All right. Well, the next step is to take this out and cut the teeth. should be enough another it's small but it's a little keyhole right there for the steel to uh, squish into so I just put the teeth in and next I want to go to the plate I'm gonna actually want to file just take a file and smooth these things out because they will uh, it will cause the dies to kind of wobble on those little burrs. That's close enough. So, I don't know if you can see that, but essentially there's now a step in here so that when I put the hot rivet in and squish it, it'll actually sink into that step. Two. All right. Well, we're down to, I guess, a moment of truth, I suppose. Oh, light in the back. Um, we're down to somewhat of a moment of truth where I'm going to try to hot rivet these dies on. And this is my setup. Uh, so I have the base plate right here. And then I brought a half inch cutoff that uh, from uh, the uh, other project I was working on, the, uh, the guillotine tool. I haven't uh, finished that one yet, but half inch so that this die or this uh, rivet here actually sits half inch down. So now when I, uh, you know, hit hopefully the ends, it'll at least, I don't know. It might work, might not, but that's the setup. I have this one pinned in place just to keep everything from moving. I'm going to heat this one up, put it in, hit it a couple times, and try to, well, uh, flip it over and, and do as much as I can. So let's set up the forge and uh, get going. Pumper nickel. Took it too long again. 
Third time's the charm, as they say. Well, of course. Oh, crap. I think it had expanded too much. Well, not going to plan. All right, well, well, this is a real bummer. I totally jacked that up. Uh, and, uh, well, I don't know if you can tell, but it's just all jacked up and not working. Uh, so I'm going to chop this thing off, try again. All right, well, I'm back to a fresh start. I got the plate cleaned up. I am instead, and, and what I did differently with this setup is on the base plate, I drilled a uh, quarter inch, roughly, roughly a quarter inch deep hole. And also, I shortened the pins by a half inch, so they're only an inch and a half. And uh, so that way they have a lot less material on the outside. Also, so, so this thing should sit, you know, in the, uh, the hole and, and all that. Also, what I'm going to do is uh, um, heat it up with a torch instead. Uh, the handheld, uh, I think that I'm just not, uh, I'm just losing too much heat. Uh, you know, the moment this thing touches the whole, the big block of steel here, it just cools down and then not being able to line up the hole right away. Like if I could just boom, boom, maybe uh, the key is to make the hole, holes actually bigger than quarter inch, so it's not quite so exact. Um, that's probably the key, is to go one size higher than the actual um, rivet itself, but, uh, well, I'm not so smart, so. That's about as hot as that's gonna get. Well, the top is actually smashed down pretty good. I think that actually worked. Should be good. So now I gotta heat that up and smash away. Take this off, grab the hammer, push this down. So the rivet, I'm going to get this out of the way, the rivet overlapped uh, the top just a little bit so there'll be a little bit of shaping on this end. I could just do that with a hand file but that looks like it worked my friends. 
I burned myself like six times. I cut my finger. I smashed my finger. Same finger I cut. Oh, today is full of injuries and uh, I'm just happy. Happy that it is working. So now let's do the uh, next one. Here we go. Down, grab, grab. Make sure to get a good grip here. gosh yeah no idea how relieved I am that this is like <laughs> this is working I don't know how well I wasn't focused on the camera but it's looking really nice so happy oh, and I can take a break from that particular step and actually, uh, and actually uh, work on the third die, which I still have to shape it. Um, so I'm going to round that one up a little bit more off camera, just to clean it up a little bit. The, uh, the uh, bottle opener is a little tight on it because, well, I'm guessing with all the heat, things kind of swelled and moved around a little bit. But... I'm sure uh, I can wiggle that thing off. <sighs> Dude. Look at that. Look at that. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. It almost looks like a real rivet. <laughs> go. I think that is going to be that die shape. Now, like I said before, it's not going to actually fit in the bottle opener, but just by eye, it's kind of the right shape. And of course, this is much more round than, than the actual shape that is here. So I'm just going to clean this guy up. All righty, we're back here in front of the camera. I went ahead and cleaned up the die um, and made uh, the rivet head or the rivet material um, right there and I made it a little shorter so it's only an inch and a quarter instead of an inch and a half like these guys um, so I have a little less material which is good and essentially I'm gonna do the same thing uh, heat it up smash it down rinse and repeat I don't I think I'm going to record it because it's literally going to be the same thing as I did for these two. <clears throat> oh man, that went fairly smooth. And uh, ah, here it is. Still hot, but uh, there goes the third die riveted on. All good. Now, like I said, I'm going to have to do a little bit of cleanup specifically on uh, this die, the second one, I suppose. Uh, because it has a little bit of a swell, especially on this front, on this front uh, half. Uh, and there is technically one last thing I need to do on this, and that is figure out some sort of. If you look here, and you look at the bottle opener. There's the uh, the wedge right here, but I guess the tooth of the bottle opener. Well. It obviously will uh, will go on, you know, like so, and we'll bend it around the jig, but I need something to hold the tooth itself at a specific angle. So, oh, let me just hang that there. Or some kind of uh, gapper or spacer or something like that. So that way I can just stick the end of the bottle opener, or like 
boom, on the, the rig and whoop, whoop, and bend it around in one fell swoop without having to worry about the tooth being at a weird angle or anything like that. So I still have to figure that out, but, whoop, it's hot. Uh, but this is great. Um, I'm going to have some lunch, I think, and just kind of think about this, let this thing cool. And, uh, and probably off camera, I'm going to hand file this a little bit to get rid of that swell. Um, and then also, I guess the second last thing, so, so there's two things left. I need to put some pins in here so that they'll sit on the anvil. And uh, when I go to rotate the thing, the, in the Pritchard hole and the whatever, the other tool holder hole, I need some pins in there so that this thing doesn't just, you know, it stays still, essentially, as I uh, bend the uh, bottle openers around this. So yeah, first time riveting. First, uh, I've been, well, I mean, bottle openers first. I mean, just, just, just doing first after first after first. Awesome. Even with all its flaws, it's pretty awesome. See you in a bit. All right, I just had a little bit of a snack and I thought about it and although I won't be able to, I don't think I'll be able to figure out the, um, the tooth holder part of the bottle opener, I can at least put the uh, stability pins, I suppose. Well, I'm back at the apartment, a little tired. It was a little bit longer day than usual. Um, filled with successes and failure. Uh, quite a bit of each, actually. As far as the successes go, I'm pretty happy. Um, we have the dies permanently riveted to the steel plate. Looking actually pretty dang good. Um, and uh, I'm actually very happy with that, even though the first, uh, you know, rivets did not go so well. And uh, yeah, so this is great. The failure obviously was in regards to the pins that are hope, uh, to stabilize it to the anvil. And what I think I'm going to actually do is take a break on this. And it's one of those tools that I need in the future anyway, is, and that is a hold fast. So I'm going to try to make a hold fast, and I'm hoping that it will hold this good as well. Um, so that way I can hold it with that, and we'll be good. Um, so this will be the end of the part one, I suppose, of the bottle opener bending jig. Um, it looks good. I am happy with the way it's going, even though, unfortunately, I drilled all these holes and they were failures and messed up because of it. But uh, I will put this down and work on the hold fast, and hopefully that will allow me to finish up this bottle opener bending jig and we'll move on to the next 50 of the 100 bottle openers soon enough. So I'll leave you here with this episode's quote of the week. that quote I'm on. Hey guys, I'm Paul Rudd. I was voted sexiest man in 2021. <laughs> Aren't I so sexy? <laughs> your quote. It's a good one. I'm a dude playing a 
another dude. This guy's there's another dude. <laughs> it's from my favorite movie. It's from my favorite person ever. I would make love to anyone who does that. Run, pull, run. I'm playing a, a little guy who, who doesn't follow the rules of physics. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll, uh, I'll see you guys later. <laughs>